Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India NPTEL course Environmental Chemistry and Microbiology. This course will be taught by Professor Shuda Goel and myself, Professor Anjali Pal. We are from Civil Engineering Department, IIT Kharagpur. This course is divided into two parts. Environmental Chemistry is the first part that I will cover and the next part is the environmental microbiology that will be taught by Professor Shudha Guel. Now, this is my module 6 and 27th lecture. In my earlier modules from 1 to 5, I have explained acids, bases and salts in my first module. In my second module, I discussed about the chemical equilibrium. In the third module, I discussed about the chemical kinetics and fourth module, I covered the catalysis. Fifth module, I told about the, new, the chlorine chemistry and nitrogen chemistry and in this module, I will cover radioactivity. Uh, in the 26th lecture, I covered radioactivity uh, part A, now it is part B. Uh, as I told you that this topic is very interesting topic and um, in this lecture, I will tell you something uh, regarding the theory of uh, radioactive disintegration and then half life and average life, radioactive equilibrium and unit of radioactivity. Now, radioactive decay, uh, the, the two scientists Rutherford and Soddy, you all, all have heard the name Rutherford, very famous person. In 1902, they have investigated the radioactive elements uranium, thorium and radium and the behavior was explained. Uh, so, that time you know the uh, during this time it has just uh, discovered radioactivity property was just discovered by Becquerel and Madame Curie and uh, uh, Pierre Curie and um, many scientists started their work on this particular topic and then um, as you have seen here Rutherford also doing some uh, experiments and uh, they have explained the theory of radioactive disintegration. Now, what is this theory? What does it say? The theory says that radioactive elements undergo spontaneous transformation that you have already seen from one atom into the other and radiations are emitted during the process. So, basically one atom is transformed into another atom. Okay? This was new that time, the concept is totally new because previously we knew that an atom can, cannot be changed to another atom. But uh, when radioactivity was discovered, then first time uh, it is realized that one atom can go to another atom. Okay, and radioactivity means it goes, it go, uh, it transfer, it is transformed uh, spontaneously. Okay, and during the tr transformation, what is happening? Some particles are coming out. So, so some radiations are coming out, and. In a alpha decay, the product element, you, now by now you know what is the alpha particles. Okay? So, when some uh, element, some nucleus is, uh, um, is uh, giving out some uh, alpha particle, then uh, alpha particles has mass, uh, 4 mass and 2 uh, charge that, uh, that we know. So, what will happen when 
some uh, nucleus will uh, give um, or um, uh, give out uh, some uh, alpha particle then what will happen that uh, uh, the, then what will happen we will see that the new element that is formed the product element it is called product element or daughter element um, parent element and then daughter element or parent element and product element. So, product element um, uh, will have 4 mass unit less and 2 charge unit less. 2 charge unit less means atomic number 2 unit less, okay. but what is periodic table? Periodic table how it is arranged? P we know that periodic table is arranged according to the atomic number not the atomic mass. So, uh, when 2 mass 2 atomic charge atomic number 2 unit of atomic number will be uh, reduced then uh, it will go where? what will be its new position in the periodic table. The new position as a result the product element get displaced two positions to the left in the periodic table. This is more this is the very important. Okay. So, alpha particles are nothing but helium and helium nucleus that means, it has 4 mass unit and 2 charge unit. So, when uh, one um, parent uh, element give out one alpha particle then the product element will get displaced two positions to the left in the periodic table okay because periodic table is arranged according to the atomic number according to the increase of the atomic number so two units less means two positions it will shift to the um, left the example is given here radium radium i already told that what is the meaning of this radium 226 it is the atomic mass and this is the atomic number. So, radium when uh, gives out one alpha particle alpha particle emission upon alpha particle emission. So, this will be reduced by 4 units. So, it will become 222 two, two, and then this one by 2 unit. So, it will be 86. So, the position of radon will be 2 units left towards in the periodic table compared to radium. In a beta, beta decay, when some element, some nucleus will uh, uh, radiate the beta particle, then what will be the position of the daughter element? Daughter, here you see, here it is written product element, here it is written daughter element. Okay. So, what is the position? Beta decay, uh, uh, in a beta decay, the daughter element has the same mass because it is electron, electron has no mass. Uh, same mass of the starting element, but the charge is increased by one unit. One negative uh, charge is less means one positive charge is more, right. So, because beta particles are electrons, as a result product element is shifted to the next position, okay, to the right in the periodic table. So, um, one negative Mm, unit is less means one positive unit is more. So, what we see here lead, lead is the parent, parent element. So, it has the atomic mass 210 and atomic number 82. So, one beta particle is emitted, okay. then this will become plus 1. So, 83 and this will remain the same, okay. because uh, electron has no mass. So, mass will be same but this atomic uh, number will be increased by 1. So, what will be the position then of the daughter element? It will be, it will be 1 unit uh, shift in the right of the periodic in the right side of the periodic table. Okay. Now, law of radioactive decay, uh, the amount of radio element that disappears in unit time is proportional to the amount present. So, you see the similarity in the as the first order reaction. Okay, the rate, rate of decay, rate of disappearance here um, radio nuclei. So, the ra rate of disappearance of the uh, radio element is the rate, rate of disappearance of radio, uh, radio element uh, 
uh, rate means per unit time of course okay is proportional to the amount present okay just like the first order rate is um, proportional to the concentration at that time that was the first order reaction right here also you can see d n d t is minus why because this is disappearing so minus d n d t equals to lambda into n so what the, what is the difference you see here in this case for radioactivity uh, we write n usually if you write c that is also okay but uh, we usually this is the um, means convention that we write n capital n uh, and in uh, there in chemical uh, chemical uh, reaction we write the rate constant or specific rate constant we write usually by small k i told you that it is small k but here we write lambda this is also specific rate constant but here we tell that decay constant because it is the radioactivity so element is decaying the starting element is decaying the parent element is decaying that is why it is called uh, not it is not called rate constant but it is called decay constant so other things are same n what is n this is the number of atoms present at that time and n 0 is the number of atoms present at 0 time starting time. Okay. So, if you um, integrate same way as we have done for if you remember for the first order reactions then upon integration we will get l n n by n 0 is equals to minus lambda t or uh, in other way you can write l n n 0 by n is lambda t. Okay and then n is equals to n 0 into e to the power minus lambda. So, it is like this uh, that is the exponential curve. Okay. So, here you can see that this is the time and this is the uh, relative activity uh, percent uh, or uh, if you start with say 100 is the concentration then with time it is uh, like exponentially it is decaying and then uh, half life here also in case of first order reaction you have seen that um, that uh, concentration to come down to its half concentration you starting con concentration to um, uh, half of the starting con uh, concentration the time that is taken is called uh, t half but there you have written small t small t half but here usually we write capital t capital t so, uh, here you start with 100 percent activity 100 and then you come to 50. Okay. So, the time that is taken here it is the half life of that particular radio element. Then again when you start with 50 and then you come to 25 you see here another t half is taken. So, if it is 4 hours then again 4 hours then again if you start with uh, here midpoint uh, of this is this one. Um, 12.5 then you start from here then you uh, uh, you see another uh, t half is taken this way it will go. Okay. Now, if you uh, look into the equation then you will see um, that at that case when it is half uh, half 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 life then you see that uh, n by n, n is equals to n 0 by 2 okay. um, because uh, the concentration is half. So, n is equals to n 0 by 2 and then we can write from equation 3 you can write l n 2 n 0 by n means l n 2 okay, lambda into t half in that case it is t half. So, this is the relation for this type of radioactive decay this is the relation it is similar as the first order reaction t half is equals to 0.693 by lambda or lambda is uh, nothing but 0.693 by t half. So, what we see here it is independent of initial concentration ok. How much amount you start with it does not depend ok. Half life is always same and it is characteristic of a particular element ok. Lambda is also characteristic of a particular element this is characteristic for an for an element ok. So, this is very important for the Mm, radioactivity radium say for example radioactive uh, radium it has particular half life uranium 235 has particular half life 
Okay. Other radioactive element has some carbon, carbon also if it is 14 carbon then it has some particular half life. So, it is characterized by the half life, it is very very important for radioactivity. Now, half life, the half life of a radioactive, a, a radioactive atom is unique property, okay. it is independent of the initial concentration just now we have seen, it is only dependent on the decay constant. Okay. If decay constant you have to find out, if you know the T half you can easily uh, find out the decay constant, if you know the decay constant you can easily find out the T half. Okay. But average life is little different, okay. it is not the same as half life, average life of a radioactive species can be found out from the sum of the times of existence of all atoms divided by the initial number. Okay. So, all atoms um, uh, if you how, how much time it is staying, if you sum it up okay, and then divide by the number of atoms then you will get, get the uh, average life and it is observed that it is average life it is given by small t usually then you will see that t is nothing but 1 by lambda and uh, t half is uh, how much, how much t half is 0.693 by lambda. So, average life is greater than the uh, half life by a factor of 1 by 0 0.693 that means 1.44. So, average life is higher than the T half. Okay. The decay process when applied to large number of atoms, uh, then you will get um, appropriate values, accurate values. So, decay process when applied to a large number of atoms can help us to measure the number of disintegrations occurring in a given time intervals. Okay. Um, otherwise, if the number of atoms is small then you, you will not get the accurate result. Okay. Now, uh, let us do one uh, problem, uh, problem here based on the half life as you have already learnt what is half life. Okay. So, what is the problem strontium 90, 90 strontium somewhere you will see that instead of writing in this fashion uh, it is written strontium hyphen 90 okay? uh, iodine hyphen 127. So, that means it is the um, it is uh, same as the mass mass number that is given. Okay? Okay, carbon 13 or carbon 14, okay. carbon hyphen 14 means carbon um, element uh, with a mass number 14, okay. because atomic number is always same right for, for a particular element, but uh, mass number will change uh, for different isotopes okay. that is why. Now, uh, radioactive nuclei uh, that strontium 90 is a radioactive nuclei of public health significance and its decay follows first order kinetics, half life is 29 years. How long approximately would a given amount of strontium 90 need to be stored to obtain 98 percent reduction in quantity? This if you have done the uh, problems on kinetics then you can easily solve it, because once the half life is given you can easily find out the decay constant. Okay. So, half life is 29 years, so um, lambda is 0 0.0239 uh, uh, year okay. and then for 98 percent reduction in quantity you can use this formula n is equals to atho into n 2 this is the n value and then this formula you can use to find out the T. Okay. So, what is the formula you have already seen just now that is the this one this formula you can use. Okay. This, is, this is a very simple uh, simple example. Okay. This is the formula okay. n by 2 this is uh, n by 2 is equals to n 0 e to the power minus lambda into 29, lambda is this one then 98 percent reduction in quantity. So, you can find out t for how much. 
Now, radioactive equilibrium, radioactive equilibrium is also very important, very interesting also. So, what you can see here, it is a chain type of reaction, you can see here it is a radium, okay. radium 226, it is the atomic mass number. Okay. Now, here you see it is going to each step one alpha particle is given out. Okay. So, here one alpha particle has gone. So, alpha particle means here atomic mass is written only atomic number is not written. Okay. Now, upon alpha elimination you see 4 mass is reduced. Next another alpha particle, so another 4 mass is reduced then here another 4 mass is reduced. So, it is a chain type of reaction radi radium to radon to polonium to lead this is the end product. Okay. Now, if you think that the rate you know rate is um, minus d c d t is equals to k into uh, k into what k into c we have seen for first order here lambda 1 n 1 for this conversion it is lambda 1 n 1, for this conversion the rate is lambda 2 n 2, for this conversion lambda 3 n 3, this is the rate, rate. Okay. Now, when one equilibrium a radioactive equilibrium is set up, when it is set up not in all cases, when it is set up, when a radio element with long life is allowed to stand over a long period long life which has a long life is allowed to stand over a long period then this type of equilibrium will be set up. Okay. So, in this case you see at that point what will happen the ratio of the number of atoms of parent and daughter elements becomes constant. Okay. So, ratio of number of atoms of the parent element and daughter element will be constant okay. at equilibrium. Okay. For the above reaction say for example, radium disintegrates to radon at a more or less constant rate lambda 1 n 1 over a few months. Radon again passes into polonium at a rate lambda 2 n 2 and then polonium to lead at a rate lambda 3 n 3. So, in a state of radioactive equilibrium rate of formation of radon is same as the rate of disintegration of radon means uh, at equilibrium also we see na, that there is no change the rate at which radon is formed thus at the same rate it is disintegrated. Okay. Then what will happen the rate of formation of radon is nothing but lambda 1 n 1 and rate of disintegration of radon is nothing but lambda 2 n 2. So, lambda 1 n 1 is same as lambda 2 n 2 okay. lambda 2 lambda 1 n 1 is same as equal to lambda 2 n 2. So, n 1 by n 2 is nothing but lambda 2 by n 1 and lambda is related to t half. So, lambda 2 by lambda 1 is equals to nothing but t half 1 by t half 2. So, you can say that number of atoms present is proportional to t half. This means that amount of product at equilibrium is proportional to its half life. Okay. In a general a radioactive equilibrium exists when a short lived daughter is produced from the decay of a very long lived parent. Long lived parent short lived uh, daughter they are daughter element this is the end product, but these are daughter okay. and this is the parent. So, from parent one should be long lived parent should be long lived and daughter should be short lived then only uh, this type of equilibrium will be set up. In a general a radioactive equilibrium exists when a short lived daughter is produced from a from the decay of very long lived parent. Okay. So, what do you understand from this in the at equilibrium if this type of reaction is happening then at equilibrium say for example, for particular daughter element the rate of formation is same as data of this uh, the rate of disintegration and that time we can write this way we can find out that n 1 is proportional to t half. Okay. n is proportional to t half. It is also you can conceive also the amount that will be present here it is proportional to t half if t half is more okay, n 1 is proportional to t half. Okay. So, uh, so, n 1 will be more when t half is more. Okay. Very interesting. Now, 
um, I thought that uh, maybe uh, if uh, I put some numericals, it will be clear more clear to you. That is why uh, for each one I have put one numerical. Here you see radioactive equilibrium exists between radium and radon, same example they have taken as shown in the previous slide. Okay. How many milliliters of radon will be present there under standard conditions of temperature and pressure with 1 gram of radium? What, why it is, is it is saying that you have to remember that from radium to radon how it is going 1 alpha particle emission. Okay by 1 alpha particle emission. Okay. So, from there uh, how many milliliters of radon will be present there under standard conditions of temperature and pressure with 1 gram of radium. Given T half for radium is atho years 1590 and T half for uh, radon is 3.82 days. You see here the daughter it is, it is T half for radium is very long lived parent and very short lived daughter. Okay. Now, just from this you can uh, start n 1 by n 2 is equals to t half by t half 1 by t half 2. Okay. 1 gram of radium is this is the mass. Okay. So, 1 by 2 to 6 gram of gram atom. So, this is the n 1 and then after putting the values in the equation and calculating we get n 2. We need n 2. Um, the value of N 2 then uh, how much gram atom uh, for this radon and then 1 gram atom occupies this much milliliter S at STP. So, the volume of radon after calculating it will come like this. Here alpha particle is not required here, but you have to know because in many numericals you will see that this will uh, be uh, required how much alpha particle is uh, produced that will be required not here but here but just simply you can start from here everything is given only n 2 uh, has to be find out found out and n 2 um, gram atom you will get just by applying this formula and then from that gram atom by using this uh, uh, this uh, concept you can easily calculate how much milliliter okay because 22400 milliliter at stp uh, 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 is uh, coming from 1 gram atom. Okay. So, that means, uh, this is the relation. So, this much gram atom how much milliliter uh, at STP uh, what is the volume that you can easily calculate. Now, unit of radioactivity this is very very important one interesting thing you can see here Curie is somebody's name. Okay. Uh, Rutherford is somebody's name, they are all famous scientists, Becquerel another name, but you see when we use uh, as the unit you see all are small, small letters. Okay. So, one query uh, the definition it gives a measure of the rate of disintegration of 1 gram of radium, 1 gram of radium, okay. how much uh, um, 1 gram of radium the disintegration that is producing that is 1 curie. Okay. How much it produces? 3.7 into 10 to the power 10 disintegrations per second. Okay. So, that is nothing but 1 curie. Milli curie, milli curie means uh, 1000 times less. So, 10 to the power 7, this is same, but this is 10 to the power 7. Then micro curie, so 10 uh, again uh, 1000 times less from the milli curie. Okay. So, this is 4. So, this is uh, according to curie, milli curie, micro curie. Then rather 4 another unit this is equivalent to 10 to the power 6 disintegrations per second. This is the rather 4. Okay. There is becquerel also 1 becquerel 1 disintegration per second that is becquerel. So, 1 curie is nothing but 3.7 into 10 to the power 10 becquerel. There are different units okay, for the radioactivity. Now, here there is another uh, numericals that is problem I have given the half life of radon 2 to 2 is 3.82 uh, days, the half life is 3.82 days. What is the weight of 1 curie of uh, radon 2 to 2? 1 curie of radon 
is the weight that will produce this much disintegration per second. Okay. Now, lambda is nothing but this one. So, after putting this you can um, get this value for lambda. Then d n d t is 1 curie that means this one. So, lambda n lambda n means a by 2 to 2 into atho this Avogadro number okay, where a is the required weight of 2 to 2 radon in gram. So, incorporating the value of lambda and after the calculation we get A is equals to this much gram. So, this is the this is based on, on the concept of Curie, okay. Curie and uh, the uh, rate constant that means, uh, decay constant how we can find out all those things. You can do it by yourself, if you understood the previous things then you can easily um, do it by yourself, but this is just for practice I have given one. Now, the references um, same references I told you that for mo this module I have uh, almost all lectures I have kept the same three books. Um, you can read from these three books uh, if you uh, are interested uh, and you, if you want to learn more obviously, you have to go through the books. Okay. These three books are very important. Now, in this lecture uh, radioactive decay process, law of radioactive decay and the half life of the radio element uh, those things are elaborated. The radioactive equilibrium has been explained and different units of radioactivity are described. Okay. Thank you.